Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to spotlight two beautiful ukuleles from Petros Ukuleles. So if you have not seen my interview with Bruce Petros, I'm going to leave that in the cards above and the description box below. You will not regret watching that video. Just getting to know Master Luthier Bruce Petros. He's been building ukuleles and guitars for 45 years. He is absolutely incredible, very, very talented, very humble. You're gonna love him. So these ukuleles are worth $7,000. This one approximately $7,300 and this one $7,550. So why are they priced at this price point? Bruce Custom makes his guitars and ukuleles with the most ornate and stunning details while remaining classic and timeless. By meticulously constructing each instrument from the finest master grade woods and using innovative techniques, his instrument are some of the most sought after in the world. Now these are what I would call his more signature models. He loves using curly sinker redwood for the tops and then the back you have the beautiful koa. Both ukuleles are made of curly sinker redwood. The back and sides are 5A curly koa. The fingerboard is ebony, Rubner tuners, and the sound port on the slatted headstock is bound with cherry and the sound port on the other one is bound with curly koa. It's outfitted with a Perflex Perfling. Recently, Paul Simon received his first guitar adorned with Perflex, a new revolutionary flexible Perfling that Martin Guitars used in its limited edition and featured it at 2018 Summer NAMM show. Now the top tone wood is not only gorgeous to look at, it is incredibly responsive, very beautiful, resonates beautifully, but it has an amazing story. Mm -hmm. Why do you like this one? Well, because it's lighter weight and it's, um, it's softer, which helps to, to bring out uh, fundamental tones, bass tones. I mean, the ukulele, just by its nature, its size, length of the strings, has a lot of trouble. And if you have a hardwood top, like a koa top, or uh, a mahogany top, or walnut top, that's a hardwood, it really does not give you fundamental bass tones. Two, this is um, sinker redwood that was uh, found in the bottom of Big River in Mendocino, California back in the 1800s when they would cut these big redwood trees down they'd float them down the river to the sawmills and some of these kind of got you know tipped under somehow and then ended up getting stuck in the bottom of the river they were drilling footings for a, a bridge and all of a sudden these shavings were coming up and they discovered uh oh there's redwood down there so they just took skiffs a couple of guys with boats and hooks and ropes and pulled these great big logs out and some of these logs were 16 feet in diameter wow. i mean big logs and so this guy just got as much as he could and stored it and uh, I got a hold of him and I said do you have any that's curly and it's got to be quarter sawn and he said yeah I've got some so he sent me a bunch of boards and I paid for them and sawed it up and it's you know it's got this this curly figure trouble smelt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where Hesitate no boy when you're with me, oh boy. Now I do want to talk about the headstocks because we have the slotted headstock and then you have your traditional solid headstock. The rollers here are different than other slotted headstocks that I've seen because they're fatter. This is like a classical guitar. It has nylon strings or nylon gut, the same type of material that they use on classicals. And they, they stretch and stretch and stretch a lot more than steel does. So if, 
the bigger the roller, the faster it tunes, the, the less windings you're going to have on there. And it really makes for a smooth tuning. Now I'm going to show you a couple of sound bites of this instrument. One is with a low G and one is with a high G. So the low G, I think it adds just a really beautiful rich tone. Some people really love the low G because they feel like it just adds more options on the fretboard. And some people really love the high G and they do not prefer that low G. So hopefully you can hear the difference between the two. Let me know what you prefer. Leave that in the comment section below. I think it's a very smart design choice and something that I do want to note is just the balance of this instrument. It's incredibly well balanced. It does not feel top heavy. I've played a lot of slotted headstocks before and it's it's it can be really really cumbersome to control. I feel like I'm just laboring for everything. For this it just feels so effortless. They're incredibly light responsive, but they're still structurally sound. I mean, if you make an instrument too light, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be structurally sound. It's going to fall apart. It's not going to last. If you make something too heavy, it's going to sound heavy. It's just going to make you feel like you got to work for it. You have to work for the sound you want to get out of. You can't really express yourself through the instrument. With these, because the touch is so light, I don't have to work for anything. Everything is just very, very effortless when I play. The sustain is insane. it's so resonant that when I talk that the strings pick up the vibration of my voice and then the body starts to resonate. <laughs> so during this whole entire time that I've been filming, I have to keep remind myself to keep my hands over the strings. Otherwise you hear the bring, 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 bring. It's beautiful. Oh, you can even hear it right now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, but it's still picking up the vibration. It's, it's incredible. Now the sound port is getting more and more popular and Bruce is receiving a lot of requests to have sound ports on his ukuleles. So uh, number one, you have the bound sound port. I've seen a lot of sound ports that are not bound and why are they not bound? Why? It's really hard to do it. It's really hard. It's very time consuming to bind the sound port. And also there's a purfling. <laughs> Everything is finished. It's absolutely gorgeous and there's just no detail spared. So when you strum the strings, the vibration is transferred to the top of the instrument and it moves, it vibrates. And so then there's a very small footprint right here for the pressure to be released, for that sound to be released. And so the sound port, it could not only serve as a personal monitor so that you can hear yourself more clearly, but it also serves as an additional pressure release valve. Now he has something called a back angled bridge. So instead of the bridge just laying straight up and down, it's 10 degrees toward this end of the ukulele. What it does is that it maintains intonation. The tension on the strings moves a bridge over time and it makes the intonation inconsistent. He took this preventative measure to ensure the instrument would stay in tune over time. You have the tie blocks. So this one is made of wood. I'm gonna get the slot of headstock, give me a sec. Okay, here we go, we're back. This one is made of bone. And so I came to his workshop a little bit ago and he said, hey, I made a couple of uh, adjustments and some innovations. And one of them was the bone tie block. And he said that as he was changing strings, he noticed that there were a couple of dents in the tie block. And he thought, well, you know, after changing the strings once or twice, I want this to last. And so what he did is that he outfitted this with bone. And of course it has a beautiful ornate design. And I love the fact that he thinks about those things. He's always willing to learn. He's always willing to innovate and he's always willing to go the extra mile. And that speaks volumes about who you are as a person. Just saying like, no, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to try to do the very best that I can to the best of my ability and still learning, still willing to make changes. And I love, I love that about him. 
So this is only a glimpse as to what Bruce can do in custom make an ukulele if you're interested. I'm gonna leave his website in the description box below. Sign up for his email list. So thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next one. Bye.